where do your ideas come from? So I'm going to talk a little today about where some of my ideas come from and being an illustrator, which is what I do. Ideas come from all different kinds of places, from things you see, from things that you're curious about, from things that you think are odd or inspiring. But ideas also come for me from things that are old, things that have a history. I love old things. Things that have a story behind them. Things that have beautiful words. And ever since I was little, I loved putting words with pictures and pictures with words. In second grade, that happened to me. I was making these characters. And um, is that door locked? Thanks. Um, I was making characters. I put them with words. And my amazing second grade teacher told me they were good. And she gave me my own area at the art show. And I knew then that I wanted to be an illustrator when I grew up. I think being an illustrator is the best job in the whole world. Because an illustrator tells a part of the story without words. The idea for an illustration can start with special place for an illustrator. This is my Mumum and Pupup's amazing brownstone Victorian house on Biddle Street in Baltimore, Maryland. And when I was little, we would go from the country to visit. And my grandmother was an artist. And nothing in this house was normal. Nothing was expected. Nothing was predictable. The fish tanks were not full of fish. They were full of snails and wormy things and crustaceans. Big wallpaper collections up to the ceiling in beautiful um, glass bookcases. It was magical. So I get to take my memories of that place and my inspiration from that place. So when I do my picture of it, I think it has more personality and more whimsy than that regular photograph. An illustrator's job is to show their interpretation of what really happens. The author is going to tell you what happens, but I get to show you. This is something I find very inspirational. When I said I liked old things, this is a tintype, which is a very old kind of photography done in the late 1800s. <clears throat> I collect them. I came across this one. It's very, very dark, but I lightened it so you could see it today. But I kept staring at it because I couldn't figure out why this boy <laughs> was standing next to this dead plant. That's a story. It makes me curious. It makes me want to make it my own. And so this is Walter and the pathetic plant. <laughs> An illustrator can give you a visual clue when you're reading. A good example is this um, riddle joke page that I did for, I think it was Ladybug not long ago. <clears throat> I get to maybe give you a little visual picture that it's going to be a slobster or triceratops or croca-cola. Another place inspiration or ideas can come from is trying to solve a puzzle or a job that you have as an illustrator. This is a page that I did for, maybe it was Ladybug too. Um, this poem is really very, very silly. And so basically, I had to come up with something to draw. So I just had to think of everything I could that was orange. But my favorite part about being an illustrator is that an illustrator gets to bring a character to life. This is Flora. She is the lead character in the chapter book that I just illustrated for Harcourt Houghton Mifflin. It's a wonderful, wonderful story by Chris Kurtz. 
<clears throat> Flora is spunky and she is adventurous and she does want so much more with her life than just to be in a pen and see the world and believes in herself. She needed to have all that personality in the drawing that I did. So when I was contacted to do the illustrations for the book, the first thing that an illustrator is usually asked to do are called character studies. And as an illustrator, I need to start coming up with Flora looking all different ways. Because that art director and editor want to see if I can make Flora from the front, from the side, from the back, make her happy, make her sad, all different ways. These are the actual uh, character sketches that I did send in. <clears throat> Another thing an illustrator really has to think about when they're developing a character is that that character needs to stand out in a crowd. In this case, Flora needs to be identified from other pigs. All I have is line. I don't have color. I can't make purple pigs and orange pigs. So I need to think of something to give her that sets her apart. And I need to think of that early on or I'm going to be in trouble. <clears throat> so what I did here was give her those funny little ear hairs that nobody else has. I was so excited to find this piece of paper when I was preparing this presentation because to me it's the perfect example of being inspired. This is an actual manuscript page that I was given and uh, sat down with the manuscript. It's pretty long, 280 pages. And so I went through and highlighted any physical descriptions or any interesting um, character traits or places that I might need to use later when I illustrated it. So as I read this passage, I thought it was beautiful. <clears throat> And I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read it out of the book, which all you authors will think is interesting, is a little different than what is there. But it's, it's the same. It's just a little different. Um, the new sky showed points of light, stars that weren't ready to leave their place yet. Like little eyes, they were watching and blinking from high above the world. She thought of the stars looking down on her mother and brothers and Luna on the farm. And she wondered how two such different places could exist in the same world. I thought that was beautiful. And it inspired me <clears throat> to do this little drawing down in the corner of the page. It's a doodle, or if you want to use a fancy name, an artist might call it a thumbnail, because it's the size of your thumb. <clears throat> and when I was asked what I wanted to use as the frontispiece in the book, which is very nice that they did that. A lot of books don't, but it's a big, a uh, bigger picture that goes right to the other side of the um, title page. I thought of that little thumbnail and that passage that I liked so much, and I did this sketch, which it got approved. <clears throat> and so now I've got a sketch that is approved, and I am going to share with you a secret tip used by illustrators. You take your sketch, you need to get it on a board so you can draw on nice paper, maybe paint it, something. <clears throat> so you scribble, scribble on the back, turn it over, tape it down. That was scribbling with pencil, graphite, and this is the tricky part. So for every drawing, every picture in the book, this is what you do. It's very exciting. Trace Flora's little coat, trace over all her little hairs, nose. Now, I've got perfect image to work from on there. And the best part is it's in pencil. So I can erase it, I can add to it. So then, for that final artwork, it's on my board with the magic technique. 
I did a process called cross-hatching, which is where I make lines one way and then another, like little boxes. And the more cross-hatching you do, the darker and darker it gets. This is the finished artwork that is also in the book. And that where some of my ideas come from. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Yes. No, I'm glad you asked that. I think it's interesting. I think they intentionally keep authors and illustrators apart, mostly for the illustrators' sake. The author <coughs> is probably still working with the editor to ch tighten up text and everything. So then the uh, illustrator comes in. I think they probably share things now and then, but I don't think they really ask for input usually. It's pretty much now it's my job and it's given to me and they want to let me do it. Um, so I pretty much just deal with the art director and the authors dealing with the editor separately. But I did, um, after it was published, we have been emailing back and forth. And uh, yeah. Any other question? Yeah. I had a self-published person, I think, just the other day contact me that I haven't called back yet. Um, I would be very reluctant to do that, I think, just because of the time and the work that is involved in it. Um, I would just think it would be hard to get that back. You know, um, a publisher just has such a, a wide marketing network that it would probably need to be something exceptional for me to think about. <clears throat> um, you negotiate that with the publisher. Uh, this was a flat fee for the South Pole Pig, which is pretty normal for a chapter book. It's often a flat fee. I'm working on a picture book right now for another publisher that is royalties. So you get an advance and then you, against royalties. Yes? Um, are you at all picky about which author you illustrate for? I mean, do you want to pick a book that you like? I mean, Not at this point. <laughs> 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 uh, I guess you could get there eventually. It's, it's just so hard to, to break into. Um, children's publishing. I mean, everybody wants to do it. And so um, I, I don't think I would do something that I really didn't like. Right. And I will say that I was, this is a wonderful story, this pig book. It, it truly is. And I was very happy about that. I was concerned. I mean, well, I'll be honest. I, and my friends here know, I mean, I, kept saying, why did they pick me for this you know, kind of adventure book about a pig? And yes, she's endearing, and there are very strong characters in it, but I think of my work as you know, whimsical and kind of funny, and um, <clears throat> that's a, they said probably for that exact reason. So, and it turns out they did, but um, I think they wanted it to appeal not to kids who might just like an adventure book, that it is more than that. Um, but no, I wouldn't do something I really did not like. Any other questions? Yes. Um, how do you, if you like draw one character, how do you get like, exactly the next time you draw that character? That is such a good question, because that's a really hard thing to do. And that's, do you remember those character sketches that I showed you of Flora? That's why I need to show that art director who wants to see if I can do that. And so I showed her Flora all different ways that you could still tell it was her, right? But she was doing all different things and looking all different ways with her face. And um, they want to be able to know before they say, okay, you can have this job, that you can do that, because that is hard. And I would say a trick is to really think before you start about something you can give that character, 
Do they have glasses? Are they tall? What things can you give them that tells the person looking at it right away who that is? Right? Did that answer that okay? Okay. Yes. How long do I get to do the illustrations? Not long enough, <laughs> probably. Um, I don't remember what this one was. Uh, normally, and it's going to be really different with a picture book than with the chapter book and the, the spot illustrations. I, they, I think they try to give um, a year to the illustrator by the time you get it to get it back, but I think it's often more like six months. Um, the picture book I'm working on right now, they totally ignored all our deadlines and now I'm probably just gonna have three months to do finished art, which isn't much. So. No, I like the beginning part. I like sketching and coming up with um, the characters, I think. Yeah, for me, I think by the time I have the sketch done, the rest is just a little more manual. And um, I like it. But I think that's also why I do the medium that I do. Um, I want to hurry up and then see it done. I, I don't, I don't want to paint and let it dry and uh, sort of like, okay, this is what Flora looks like. Yes, now I want to see her, you know, at, at the end on the ship, you know. Um, yeah, probably a sketch is, yeah. Would you add in your picture book where the art is more prominent? Yeah, that's a good question. I um, I just think they're entirely different. Uh, I have no say in this book where the pictures go, what shape they are, what size they are. A page turn in a chapter book doesn't, it exists more, I think, for the author than it does uh, for the illustrator. In a picture book, it's more married. I think that it, you, you're working together. You really can't have one without the other. This book could not be illustrated, and it'd still be a good book. It's better now, <laughs> but it, it could it could be a book. Yes, in the back. So. Back and. In, it's interesting, and it's kind of fun dealing with two different publishers so close in time for me. Um, this, this book, I would send them the character sketches, so I pretty much deal with the art director, but then she would get together with the editor and review the character sketches. And they got, this was a quitty, pretty quick turnaround book, and they got back to me probably within several days. Um, then we started the interiors, and I showed them to the art director as I went, but only, only sort of as a courtesy. Uh, in fact, I w they wanted me to do less line than I was doing in the first several, so I did redo those. <clears throat> um, and then once I felt pretty confident, uh, I did the sketches. <clears throat> they had very few changes on them, which was wonderful. And uh, then took them to final. It was at the final stage where they wanted less line work, and I redid them. Um, but then I sent them, and there were no changes after that. Now, the picture book that I'm working on, <clears throat> they pretty much said, here, what would you do with this? And I, I, was, I was amazed by that. I thought they'd at least give me a little more than that. Um, but this is how they work, which is good for me. Uh, so I did a whole round of uh, first sketches. 
and just now I'm doing the second sketches from their comments on them and then they'll have changes on those second sketches and hopefully then none that finish because I don't want to have to redo it and they don't want me to have to redo it. So, yeah. When you're doing the chapter book, do you come up with all, like just wherever you grab inspiration as you're reading through it and then you, they pick and choose which ones they like or do they say we want something for this area? <laughs> this area. <laughs> Uh, they did with this. I'm not sure everybody would do that. I kind of think they would. And when I do um, the work for uh, Karis Publishing for Cricket and everything, they give you the page layout pretty much. And uh, for the pig book, you know, some of them were odd. There'd be a circular spot in the middle of the page, and then they would highlight what they wanted me to illustrate. Um, yeah, the only real freedom came uh, with the cover and the um, frontispiece and the uh, characters themselves. So, yeah. Yeah. Patty, I'm sorry. Um, what authors and illustrators have been inspiration to you? I know. I'm really bad at answering that question because so many and it changes all the time. Um, like, I love line work. I love, I think, the power of a line is so strong. So I love Maurice Sendak and um, Edward Gorey. Uh, I always, I never, the names just never come out of my head when I want to. Uh, just any illustrator who creates a strong character, I think a real believable character I'm drawn to. Can I take just one more? Yeah, just, because no you, because I didn't see it at the same time. On a drawing, <laughs> that's a good question. It depends so much. Like these drawings I'm working on now for the picture book are taking me a really long time because there's a whole bunch of characters in them and that's really hard. So it's like doing a drawing for each one and then that has to be behind that. And that, So that takes me, <laughs> I usually work from the time the kids go to school till about two o'clock, so eight to two every day, and probably to get a sketch like that, if I had those chunks of time, at, at least two days, probably. But to do a drawing of flora, you know, could take minutes, so. Okay, sorry, thanks. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thanks.